yes all departments of memory dealing with breast cancer particularly the specialist departments do have an access to a geneticist and we have some of them very very good ones Well, this uh, the the treatment options of of breast cancer usually are a combination of surgery, chemotherapy. Now, targeted therapies more and more. You know, more sophisticated chemotherapies, immune immunotherapy, radiation therapy, or more commonly, a combination of some combination of these. You get my point. That's where the that's where the art of treating cancer now lies also breast cancer which one before which one later what to combine with what because now there are internationally laid down guidelines the national comprehensive cancer network guidelines in the us the asco guidelines the american the 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 european society of medical oncology guidelines and slowly now institutional guidelines also the national cancer grid in india is throwing up its own guidelines so which is because because the same cancer can behave differently in different women different race you know different origins different ethnicities it can behave differently so only so it's only right that we make decisions based on the evidence from our sample populations and if there is a meta analysis and assessment and analysis of these population data it should have representations from all it can't only have european women it can't have only american it has to have all at places you know in that sample in that data for that sample to be of some worth for it to be followed and we are doing that now so all i told you all these modalities that is why you now have a tumor board before you decide what's going to be done with a particular patient all these people the medical oncologist the surgical oncologist the radiation oncologist will sit down together use these investigations to find out what stage it is and therefore decide on a treatment plan so what's going to be done up front what is going to be done later what is your motive and of course the centerpiece of this decision making has to be an informed patient as a clinician it's our duty to keep the patient duly informed of whatever knowledge exists at that point of time and that knowledge is also dynamic it's changing every day there are newer things coming up for instance the the next generation sequencing and the molecular analysis and the mutational analysis for cancers it's almost become like a urine test culture sensitivity test for the urine in the sense i can with some reasonable accuracy determine today what drugs will work in this particular patient all that is happening so and therefore the doorway i have to increase the doorway of my brain of my acceptance of letting all the seep through and then not only just retain it with me absorb it analyze it and then convey it to my patient because if i ob omit any of these steps i'm doing something incomplete because unless research on which billions of dollars are being spent throughout the world is translational which means is not the effects of that are not enjoyed by the patient what use is it if a drug new drug makes you live better or live more what use is it if my patient can't use that for her benefit so i've got to make that happen i'm just a vehicle i'm a i'm a i'm a step in that process and i understand my responsibilities and so do my colleagues we can wait to the patient make it happen for her so it requires a lot of talking to people within it's so it's about teams no solo flights anymore it's teams that do the work it's important for teams to think nearly alike you know work effortlessly in unison like a good machine and that is the role of organizations and hospitals their role is to make sure that these teams are able to function effortlessly and smooth it was the ultimate ultimate gain has to come to the patient her satisfaction indices have to be really high 